Hello and welcome to The Chain, a series where one episode links to another by some means, either a composer, director, an actor, uh, the title, the genre, it really could be anything. Uh, last week we had a look at a little sci-fi film called Alien, um, with a score by Jerry Goldsmith, and this week, linking via Jerry, um, we are looking at Gremlins from 1984, the original film in that, uh, so far, two film franchise. Who knows, we may see more. Um, and that track that you heard coming in, uh, known as Spilt Water, is uh, a really good one, I think. Uh, features a lot of synth work. Um, and it, it's a great score, it's one I really love. And you can just tell that Jerry was having an absolute blast when he wrote it. So um, I'm really thrilled to be doing a cue from this and if you were here last week you'll know that uh, we're actually going to be having a look at a cue from near the beginning of the film um, late for work um, so as usual I've set myself up a template and here we go that's that so it's uh, in case you weren't aware of um, there's different ways of numbering cues um, and you'll find uh, maybe back in the sort of 70s ish era those scores are often numbered this way like R1 P4 which is real one part four to real two part one here um, whereas nowadays you get things like 1 M1 which is um, real one music cue number one and you get other variations on the thing um, yeah this is this is gonna be fun this particular cue is slightly less um, well, it's not less synth heavy, um, 
but uh, they're less prominent than what you heard in that cue coming in. Um, but the manuscript for this um, is very, very prescriptive, um, which is brilliant because uh, in a lot of scores, if it has synth, it might literally just say synth and just kind of you're left to wonder what it was, or it was up to the um, programmer to come up with the sound that they wanted. Um, in this, I mean, Jerry was, he had all of these synths himself at home and he knew exactly what sounds he wanted. So all the presets are actually labelled in the score. Um, and I've got all the manuals for these synths. So I can actually marry up what those presets are with sound names, but also you know how they would sound. Um, obviously, Note Performer doesn't have those equivalent sounds. So we're going to have to be, do a bit of jiggery-pokery, um, but not too much, I don't think. But uh, yeah, you can see here on the score, ready to go, we've got uh, five synths, all amazing synths. And there are actually six in this queue, because the Prophet T8 also has a MIDI link to a Yamaha DX7-1. Um, so that is um, slaved to it and effectively playing the same thing, doubling. A um, little bit of percussion, a pretty decent sized string section, otherwise uh, not too big. So, um, yeah, we're going to crack on with it. It's in cut common, um, so quite fast. Um, and this is another one of those where the tempo marking is in frames. So it's 18 frames. Um, it's the click that uh, translates to 80 uh, minimum beats per minute. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to launch into it. So. <laughs> Yeah, and in fact, uh, Jerry Goldsmith makes a cameo in the movie as well. Uh, he's in the same scene as uh, Steven Spielberg. He's in, in the phone booth as Spielberg goes past on his kind of bike thing. Right, here we go then. Right, let's get in. Hello everyone, by the way. Uh, hi Joseph, hi Shaman, hi Michael. And if anyone else is here, do come and say hi in the live chat. It's always nice to know that I'm not just sat here talking to myself. interesting um, muted trombone sound at the beginning and this is one thing that isn't quite as prescriptive as it could be um, it just says one sword solo um, so muted um, but it doesn't say what type of mute so we might have a play around because note performer has actually got I think five or six different types of brass mute um, so we can see what we can come up with For now, I'm just going to put solo and sort. Uh, I I can't sort. Hello, hi Andrew. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jerry gets a, a cameo in the sequel. He actually gets a speaking part, which is fun. It's quite a fun, a nice photo of um, Joe Dante directing Steven Spielberg in this, actually. Um, I'll see if I can find that. I think I have it. Um, 
I don't normally do layout, but I'm going to do a little bit of formatting here just because it makes things a bit easier to read. Um, SMF. Just the one tuber. Um, let's put the tint in, uh, which is. We're not going to need all this percussion showing either. I just wanted to show what is actually in this particular cube. Um, Missing there. Uh, that's interesting. I guess I'd have been bumped straight to 15, is that right? I remember that um, Sam Raimi's Spider Man was the first time we over here had a 12A rating, which is. Um, anyone under 12 can go with an adult. Um, that was brought in, or is it under 12? Maybe it's, um, no, 12, maybe it was 12 to 15 year olds could come with an adult. Because um, we had a 12 rating um, and we had 15s. And I remember Spider-Man 1 came out as a 15, and um, you know, people were complaining they wanted to be able to see it. So it was re-released again with a 12A certificate. Um, right, um, we have... This is interesting. This is a um, marking that I only came across on suspended symbol. Um, this week, actually, with um, my work on Conan the Barbarian, um, I've not seen the um, plus and circle used as choke and open on suspended symbol before. But if you've never seen that before, uh, that just means that you're essentially holding the symbol and hitting it, and then not for the circle. So it's choked. Uh, in fact, that should be um, open. So that's the choked one. Then that's repeated. There. We don't need to explain ourselves again there. Um, I'm going to mark those at MF because of what else is going on around. There's no actual dynamic marking on those on the score. 
Um, that's a myth. That's good. So then we come down to our first usage of synth. So here we're going for the profit T8. Um, fantastic synth. Um, by sequential circuits. Um, and if I'm reading that right, that's a I should be on the right tab. Um, uh, that sounds like it might be right. <laughs> um, so this is marked. Um, I'm going to put this in boxed text actually, rather than just plain. So the patch on this is right one one, left one one, double, and that means nothing to most people. However. <laughs> Hiya Pete, no worries. <laughs> um, let me show you. Um, here is the Profit T8 program list. So, um, we've got R11, L11. So, um, as we go, L11 and R11. So depending on what the number is and that you can put any combination of these together. So we know it's acoustic piano and the, the full range because we're using both sides. And that's where the split point is if you were to put different left and right. So rather than that we could put acoustic piano which is exactly what we've got coming out there. Um, so we want, uh, well actually, I'm going to do this upside down so I can put the flat in. Let's And of course, these synths had numerous knobs and dials, faders, and things that you could fiddle around and adjust these sounds. But um, these presets, you know, um, are available to you and uh, dialed in. They're written on here, nice and clearly. It's very nice and clear scan of the manuscript. So. And here um, we are doubling that on the OB8 Oberheim. Um, here, this is marked ABD4, and then um, MIDI DX1, um, which is sort of written like non non box like this D, uh, gx71 let's just, just show you what it looks like on on my page and then um, that says internal 13 so <laughs> So let's translate those. Um, ABD4 on Oberheim. So Oberheim's program list looks like this. Similar again. There's ABD1234. Um, let's zoom in a bit. You can see the detuned long piano.
and uh, then on the uh, DX7 um, internal 13 uh, int 13 I'm looking for Internal 13. Mary B. Mary Bumba. <laughs> okay. I think that's a marimba. <laughs> So I'm going to put. Um, how am I going to do? I'm going to do that like this. Like that. <laughs> this is good. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that about goodies. That is pretty cool. Hi Penny, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's tickled me. Right. That's not a typo. That's exactly how it is in the patch list. Okay. So what we could do here is um, to get that... Um, Sound you can actually detune in um, Note Performer. There's a tuning plugin, orchestral tuning, but I think that affects everything. Um, I think let's try that. No, it's not everything. I mean, undo, undo. <laughs> quick. Um, let's just make sure that that's yeah back on 440. <laughs> Otherwise, everyone's going to be going ah what? Um, I don't think we've got a detuned piano, so we'll go with that. But we could put a marimba in with that, double that, um, and hide it. So we'll show the uh, behind second stave. We do that. We do that. We don't need to worry about. The fact it's up in the sky. Um, we can set that to marimba. And I think um, why is it not done? Um, Okay, well I'm doing that. Um, we'll just put it on another hidden staff somewhere. But yeah, it'd be fun to kind of build up that um, sound. Didn't realise you live streaming the transcript streaming process. Hi Noah, nice to see you. Uh, yeah, not transcription um, per se. I'm I'm not transcribing this from audio. I'm using the manuscript. Um, so I'm copying um, let's get this in as usual I'm waffling and not typing <laughs> so, um, four, six. If you're wondering why I'm saying numbers like that, um, I'm putting the intervals in um, by number rather than putting the pitches in. Um, let's just make that over a bit. Um, performing the cardinal sin of doing 
layout editing as we go. So it all gets screwed up if you try and do it as you go. <laughs> as I'll show, no doubt. Right, violins are together. Um, violas are the octave below. So that bracket notation means it's non divisi um, Quite straightforward for strings to play. Um, a spread chord like that. Um, as long as it's you know, set, spaced correctly, you can play a note on each string. You can even um, leave strings out if you were to, if you wanted to kind of grab specific strings and pluck. Um, that's you can't do that very quickly, unless you actually put the bow down, and then you can kind of strum. Um, not many pieces do that, man. Okay, and we just double check that this sounds okay. Okay, let's just make sure my mixer is straight across. Um, okay, got some imbalance, so I'm just going to run the reset plugin. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got the sketches for this as well, but this is from the full score manuscript. Um I mean it I don't normally work from the full page showing at one time, so if I show this it you can see it's kind of minuscule, but that's the manuscript. Um, uh, there are a couple of instances within the full score where it says, you know, um, rather than copying it, just take it from the sketch. So it's not very helpful if you haven't got the sketch. <laughs> Luckily, I do. So, um, right. Oops. 
that repeated without the dynamic again. Um. <laughs> well, the thing about Judy Green paper is it, it's a particular um, quality that you can do a lot of erasings and corrections and things on it without it losing its physical integrity. Um, it's actually printed on um, like a f accounting paper. Um, which is why it's got that kind of fawn yellowy colour to it. <clears throat> Full of useless information. <laughs> Now one thing about um, this muted trombone, it is solo, um, but because it's muted it's kind of not balancing with everything. So it is marked forte um, and a player would bring that out, but obviously this system is going to read it and take it literally. So I'm going to adjust that. If I put a tilde sign in, then it will make anything I put in afterwards invisible, but actually read and played back. So I'm going to make that uh, two Fs. Just bring it up one marking. That should help it a bit. Uh, this cue is orchestrated by Arthur Morton, by the way, um, and uh, occasionally it's not hugely clear from his handwriting, but it's reasonably clear. Um, is that my wood block? Yeah. And that. Tim Pony. Um. It's also not always completely clear whether he's written on on the space or the note on the line. <laughs> so, if anything is a bit squiffy, we'll pick it up when we play back the audio. So, worry ye not. Um, key. And normally I would frown upon um, putting crescendi through rests, but that's a more in the line of the phrase, um, so I'll forgive that. Now we've got our first proper DX7 entry, um, and this has got another, yet another way of um, writing the what's going on on the synth. Um, so let's just put the notes in first. So this synth um, had an expansion slot where you could put cartridges, ROM cartridges. Uh, so this is from cartridge number four, uh, A bank program number five. Um, 
So here we go again. Um, let's for a five. Um, translate to now the cartridge list is not in the manual. So I made a sticky note and it is bassoon. Good. That's probably needing to be played staccato. But we'll see. In fact, I might be able to, rather than changing the markings from what's actually in the thing, uh, in the manuscript, I'll put stack like that and hide that. Because I think Note Performer will read that and play it staccato. Thank you, sticky note. You can go away. Oops, not that one. Um, okay. And then here we have uh, Yamaha GS1, uh, which is electric piano, um, but it has a few different voices. And then here, that's going to play these notes. And the voice that Matt is playing is, it literally just says three, like that. Um, and voice three, <laughs> this is fun, on the GS1, is clavichord one, and it says use staccato touch. Oops, let me on there. So again, you know, like here, I'm going to put staccato hidden. We don't actually have a clav sound in Note Performer, unfortunately, so uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. It'll be fine for the playback. As I said, this is uh, the synths aren't as prominent in this cue, um, so it should sound fine. And at the end, anyway, I'm going to play back against the OST. Um, so it will sound just as it's meant to. Um, we're still pits here, so we've got this is where we get our little tune. Oops. with them. Um, See there's chat activity going on. I'm, I'll look at it in a sec.
hopefully that's going to sound recognizable. Let's see. There are some other um, companies. Um, I forget what they are off the top of my head. Um, with regards to paper being pre-printed, uh, since we're played live, definitely. Um, it's a there's a list of um, players in the um, liner notes for the film score monthly release of this I think uh, I think is it film score monthly might be Warner archival I can't remember. And that's repeated, so it's nice and straightforward. I'm going to crack on um, as much as possible because um, I'd really like to get near to the end of this queue if possible. as an editorial but there's no accents on these particular bars in the woodwind at least Most likely we'll need those accents back in. We'll see. Uh, Harp does that again. As does DX7. Oops. DX7. Interesting. Ah, DX7 should have repeated that. Good. Uh, 
keep it as per the manuscript for the minute. I think. that and then we go two bars copy link Those ambiguous note heads again. Right, there we want those joined. We're just going to continually crescendo and crescendo. Um, another one of those things where the player would know instinctively, but the computer doesn't. the violin, so I'm just going to listen to that on its own. And was it that? Maybe it was violas actually. I see, so it's kind of out of step. Uh, let's see how that sounds. Okay. I like it. <laughs> it's just caught the tail end of that. Uh, yeah, I do love the Supergirl score. Uh, 
lots of synths in Logan's Run. Not one of my favourite scores. Sorry, Jerry. Uh, stars. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move on and I'll go back and play from the beginning again, maybe in a page or two, just so we get a nice little chunk um, of that. Right, so we've got some notes. I'm in here. Ah! to give it another listen. It's been a very long time. I don't think I've listened to it separately, to be honest. Um, and it's definitely been a very long time since I've seen the film. Maybe 20, 30 years even. Solo the woodwind in a second. Same again. an easier way of working out the intervals, isn't it? Just don't do them. Um, <laughs> so that needs an accent. Got one. Not worrying about collisions right now because I can space that all out very easily afterwards. Um, anyone who hasn't been on the stream before, um, anyone who has, I'm very sorry I'm repeating myself, but um, I don't worry too much about layout as I'm going. Uh, actually, that's not entirely true. I do worry about it, and then I have to force myself not to change it, because um, therein lies a lot of wasted time. Because as soon as you put some more notes in, it all screws up the layout that you've nicely um, done anyway. So, best left alone and done at the end. Um, Clicks on this. Yeah. That's fine. 
Nein. Ähm. Das ist MP. Three and four, and then we've got trumpets come in here. Nicely, and these are the wrong way around. Mm. Uh, so then we've got. Trombone on it's all accented. All forte. Still still muted, I think. Although it doesn't specify here. It hasn't said to take it off. So it does say solo. So again, I'm going to do the hidden dynamic that brings it up a notch. And tuba. Some fun synth work in this score. I mean, the, the kind of cat meowing for um, the bad gremlins. It's all written in the score. Um, it's all there. And it's great. Now, if I've done this right, this should be xylophone. It is.
Uh, neither can I. <laughs> um, we'll see. have we got a bit of GS1 Right then, let's see what we've got. Yeah, I'm gonna space that out a bit, run that, and that's helped with our collisions a bit. Let's have a listen. Let's turn you up a touch. Maybe it's not a transposing score. Interesting. Uh, hmm. Or maybe which makes sense. Maybe there are trumpets in D. Hmm, that's fun. There's no key signatures to give it away. 
those are definitely right. Written notes. So what should we expect to be coming out? Probably that. What if I do trumpet in D? And that's not helping. Hmm. A slight mystery. I would expect that to be. Uh, let's see. That to come out sounding. Uh, G sharp B. So if that's going to be my favourite in that. Yeah. Who on earth has engraved this? Someone's engraved this. Um, yeah, G sharp B D, which is down a tone from what's written. Why would I put it up a tone? Hmm. Consult the sketch. Um, reference. G sharp B D. That's trumpet in C. I presume. Put everything on here. I think I've just um, copied it wrong. I presume everything on the sketch is in C. So, uh, fun, haha! <laughs> Can we see the sketch? <laughs> uh, I'll go on then, very quickly. I'll show you a flash of it. Um, here 
is G sharp B D. Whereas um, on the full score, yeah, we're upper tone. Um, I suppose it's possible. This is not trumpet and be quiet. Ah. That's what it is. My template, I must have left it on trumpet in some other key. Um, <laughs> great. Well, that was fun. Yeah. I'd be interested to know where that engraving came from. Uh, I didn't realise anyone had actually typeset this before. Um, if it's got anyone's name on it. Um, I don't need that. Right then. Nope. Uh, oh, the typeset. Did they typeset the suite? Interesting. Yeah, no, I know which suite you mean now. Yeah, there was a performance in Hungary, maybe, um, which Jerry conducted. I want to say Budapest. That should sound a bit better. Helps if you play it on the right trumpet. Um, one, two. state. There we go. That sounds a bit more healthy, doesn't it? Right, mystery solved. Okay, we got stuck on that for a bit longer than I would have hoped. I'm totally going to use that hack again. I thought that was good. So, so I don't have to worry about um, 
figuring out these intervals again. So I'm just change that to two. And then put in change back to one. Jobs are good. Peter, good to see you. Hope your shoulder's going okay. That's uh, <laughs> quite a war wound you've got going on there. says this says program three I wonder if that's right but um, program three on the DX7 is brass three so let's change that from so to brass three and then maybe there's a should we put out a trombone? Um, D X seven two. sound as synthy as it does on the DX7 obviously, but that'll do. Who can engrave this faster? <laughs> well, do you have the manuscript? That's the question. I suppose you might have that sweet. Um, oh, I only went up to six, seven, eight, nine, I should have gone. Yeah, that's a bit of an extra handicap. <laughs> uh, one thing you might have missed out on, Peter, is um, how prescriptive this is for the um, synths. Um, all the um, program lists are in there, so it's really good.
Oh, Arthur, you got some sucking hand writing. Never mind. Right, that should um, let's see. It should sound alright now. Thanks for showing a glimpse of the sketch. Why was I nervous about showing it? Well, um, well, I paid for a, a license to get a copy, and then I paid to have it copied. So I kind of want to keep it to myself. <laughs> um, and it's got my email address um, watermarked on it as well. So my personal one. So yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. If I publish it, you'll be able to see it then. And of course you can see what's going on on screen, so it's kind of a translation of it. Those comma supra copy other bars very handy 
time savers, especially in the day and age of copy paste. And that's the whole reason that they put them in in the hand copying days. Um, just to say this is the same as bar, blah blah blah. I want to play back just the strings on their own in a minute because the interplay between them is really great. I love it. have a listen to the strings on their own because I love this little um, particularly between the violin and viola let's crank it up just a notch oh we were already up a notch okay another notch between these guys. Yeah. That's so cool. Love it. Right. Oh, hi, Donny. Nice to see you. Flutey flutes. We're almost at the double bar line where we get into our lyrical B theme. Mm. 
drops out there. Pursue. Check these guys. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> um, still at who? Do the dynamics again. Okay, leave that in because it's been a while. Um, I could probably lift the trumpets from there. And the trombone and the trigger. And the <laughs> this is just right. Saved a bit of time. You don't really need console in there, so I think I'll just keep that out. Keep it nice and tidy. MF, MF, just make sure the notes are the same. Um, yep. interesting so I'm just going to double check back on the other trumpet okay it's different the second time that's good or is it did I errors as we go. It's always a process of constant polishing. Um, <laughs> e sharps, that's all. <laughs> Yep, good. Then we get triangle, which I think is down here. Yep. What, what, what? WKLP. <laughs> what about the lower chromatic neighbor in trumpet two there? Uh, no, it stays the same. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. Right. Like that. Um. Yeah, tricky to pick out. Um. Oh, really? Zoom on that, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean. Um, I mean, the note heads are not very well placed. Makes it a bit tricky. 
to uh, make out. Uh, first time around, is it written any clearer? Hmm. No. I guess we can go with that. We go with the sweet version. Um, it's the kind of thing that I pick up on when I compare it to the soundtrack later on on a second pass. Um, so it's not a huge concern at this point, unless it's like glaringly obvious when we play back that something stands out as being wrong. Like when we were using the wrong trumpets. Xylo. <clears throat> uh, Then, um, Oberheim, ABD4 again, so it's the same. Um, it. Um, okay. I'll copy you for a minute. Let's go loud show. Prime two. I'm sure this is just a show. Left and right hand. So it's got that ABD4 again, which was. Uh, let's bring up the synth menu over here. ABD4 is that um, detuned long piano. where our Moog comes in. So this comes in on program number 93, which is not detuned long piano. Um, now this is only marked as Moog in the um, manuscript and I'm going by um, since I know that Jerry had um, around this time, so I'm, I'm expecting that this is a memory MOOC. So uh, 93 is uh, a triangle wave, so a saw wave. This is going to have nothing like that in Note Performer. Um, In fact, and this might be of interest, 
actually go to 93 um, triangle waves here so you can see this is how you would have to set up the synth to get this sound and it says the triangle waves generate a basic signal you keep unique to the synthesizer try this voice with and without glide uh, glide I assume is portamento so um, yeah so a triangle wave is a saw wave looks like a saw tooth on the oscilloscope um, suspect note head placement <laughs> um, no dynamic at this point so we'll probably sync up with everything else which was on about an MF um, yeah and I'm gonna fudge that with um, a clarinet I think Except I want it in C. <laughs> in C. So that it doesn't change that. Just so we get something kind of there or thereabouts. Um, it's not nearly harsh enough, really, for a saw wave. Um, although at this moment it wouldn't be hard, so um, I don't know. I'd listen to the audio and see, but we're going to play this back against the OST in a minute anyway. So it doesn't really matter if I get it dead right. Play back on note performer. This is Arco. being bowed of course um, no dynamic marking to suggest it changes at that point uh, I'm in two still with same set of synths as Legend, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, Twilight Zone's around the same time, I think. So this is still Pitts for Viola. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who calls them that or are you just quoting me <laughs> 
I might have been guilty of calling them that before. the previous two bars. Don't need to go to my dynamic reminder. Demonic reminder. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. In fact, you only need two strike throughs on that because it's already got a beam. And then we're not gonna so we're gonna do uh, one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them. GS1 comes in there. Um, if not, up the octave and make um, Nice to see you've got a couple of things lined up for scoring on. Oh, yeah, you read my mind because I was going to promote that. Um, anyone who's free on the 12th of February, um, which is a Saturday at 8 pm UK time, which is midday LA, uh, I'm not sure what that is, New York or whatever, um, but 8 pm UK time. So you can work out from there. Um, we're doing a score score study session on Independence Day, and if you do sign up, uh, there's a bit of a Brucey bonus for um, attendees in that uh, you can get a discount from me uh, for a limited time. 
Um, if you haven't got that score already, that's a good opportunity to pick it up. And then in April, um, I forget the date, I think it's uh, 27th or somewhere around there, let's have a quick look. Uh, no, it can't be the 27th, it must be the 23rd. Um, we are doing a score study session on aliens. So that's going to be good. And then we're working on cooking some stuff for ASMAC as well. So it's going to be really busy this year. Uh, still plugging away on Conan. Um, I'm doing one of the most amazing cues at the moment, uh, which is the kind of climactic battle. Uh, that shouldn't be like that one of my list. so many good cues to choose from in Independence Day that um, our short list is not short at all. <laughs> so we may end up doing a couple of sessions at least. Uh, I think that's just a match, so we can just copy that down there and there and save ourselves a bunch of time. So we'll check those in a minute. to zoom in on the manuscript to check these note heads. He does does this thing of the stem is not necessarily connected to the note head or it's on the right hand side of the note head or it's on the left hand side. It's like hmm. totally understand why. I mean yeah, hand copying, hand orchestrating at this the required speed. Um, it's not going to look the same as um, sort of hand copied publishing parts, but still, you know, it doesn't help me very much. Right. Let's go back to 100%. Yep. Check that page. I just remembered I turned it right up as well. Sorry about that. <laughs> when we were listening to the pizzicato. So if you've just uh, blown a speaker, do apologise. Don't send me the bill.
I'm just teasing you a page at a time, aren't I? <laughs> totally intentional. Um. We'll sort out the spacing again in a minute. Horns we have. Not going to flip that because I am intending to um, swap this to concert score um, once I've finished. And if I flip that stem now, when it moves a fifth, it probably won't have needed flipping. So that's the sort of thing where I'm talking about um, leaving formatting for later. Otherwise, Therein lies madness. before. Sorry, just bear with me two secs. I'll be right back.
Uh, thank you for letting me know. Um, damn, I thought I'd turn my microphone back on. Ah, uh, I clicked the wrong one. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I've been imparting such wonderful information as well. <laughs> Um, ah, so did you miss my comment about Academy of Scoring Arts as well? Um, because uh, I said that it's uh, definitely worth uh, signing up if you are available on the 12th of February. Um, because uh, attendees will be able to get a discount on Independence Day if you haven't already got it. Um, it's a good opportunity to pick up a really fantastic score. Another shameless plug. And I also said you should like and subscribe to the channel because, you know, then. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, what I was saying with the notes was that this gliss is kind of happening uh, too soon. Um, even by setting it to a late gliss, it's still too soon. What we really want to hear is um, like. Um, oh, are we on No, no that's fine. We want to hear that. A gliss from there, so maybe um, so we do that. <laughs> oh, sugar, sorry. I think that's more what we want to hear. Um, so we can do that copy. Um, paste into voice one into two. I can do that, and then um, filter for voice two and hide it. And then at this point, um, select voice one and turn off playback. So we've got a visual version and an audio version. Audio version is hidden, visual version won't play back. So hopefully that will sound more like what we want at that moment. So let's see. See, see the difference between the two? Uh, I prefer that. It's not great, but it's better. So we have that. One thing that that does do, though, is you might have noticed the spacing changed. Because we've got two semiquavers in there, um, Sibelius is making room for them, even though they're not visible. Um, so you could actually um, select that second one and scooch it up. Um, And get your spacing back to something like right. Um, and then copy those like that. And yeah, you're fiddling around. But we don't want to worry about that right now. Because um, therein lies madness. Uh, <laughs> How weird. Why do it with a recorded score like Gremlins? Um, because I'm mad. <laughs> I just I like to have it sound decent. That's all. Um, it's also kind of fun to um, push the thing to actually make it sound good. 
and that doesn't take a lot of work. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, and then we want to put a two to pick. Um, just want to change announcement. Let's bring that back down. Oh, I do love all these stupid um, spam messages. Thanks for that, Thomas Collier, who doesn't exist because he's just an algorithm. Could have been a little bit of um, sort of uh, RAM lag um, that caused that slight shift in the, the rhythm um, because I'm streaming at the same time. Uh, it's uh, not a. I didn't notice anything too untoward on this end. But. Um, I usually export my audio afterwards and um, play it back because you get that sometimes. When note performers trying to read everything as it goes, it just kind of freaks out a little bit. Darren, nice to see you. <laughs> what time do you call this, eh?
Right. Yeah, see, this is nice, this bit. I want to carry on. I've run over my usual time. I normally try and keep it to two hours if I can. Um, I'll do as much as I can get away with before um, Mrs. Siddle says, uh, excuse me, I want to go to bed. This now gets a program change to um, 15. Not very useful to anyone really, is it? So let's go have a look at the GS1 manual, um, which is that one. 15 is electric piano 4. Uses staccato touch and sustain. Um, or sustain, yeah. So unfortunately, um, Uh, note performer doesn't have an electric piano sound and that electric piano is not kind of a, a, a synth equivalent of a piano you know it sounds very much like a piano it it's its own thing um, as any synth aficionado will no doubt say right so um, I'm just going to keep it an acoustic piano sound because I can't think of an equivalent right now. Um, we don't need to worry too much about that really. As we are going to play this against the OST in a minute. Um, faith a little bit with that because of the note heads. Um. I can zoom in on it later, but I'm trying to save a little bit of time. A different you know, dynamic. What do I? Uh, what did you use in Spagos before? Note before general MIDI. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
what's that crazy? Um, <laughs> right. Uh, there we go. So, pick. Change. Flute. Nomenclature. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> It worked for me. It's fine. I only needed a representation of what it was going to sound like, roughly. Um, like on the page for me at the end of the day. Because cartridge four is not in the manual, it is. Uh, oh, I didn't list it out. Hang on a second, then. Uh, open a new tab. Come on, guys. Um, Hear the dog coming. That's a sign. Um, yeah. Hey, not quite. This one. <laughs> Told you. Uh, so, uh, for A1 is Piccolo. Okay. So let's wind this up. Um, come on. So we want to pick patch on there. pick is playing an octave lower <laughs> than the synth pick which is fun possibly down to um, dynamics <laughs> fun All right we'll be done in a sec so we 
again. And that goes up to D. Same as above. Right, come on, Chris, let's get started. Attached, I think. But um, that's all I'm going to do because, uh, as I say, it's uh, late here and uh, I have overrun. What I'm going to do though is export that so you can see it a little clearer on the page. Once I've got all the notes in for this queue, I've then trimmed down any unused staves and things and sort out the layout really nicely. Um, so hopefully, at some point, we'll see that. Um, we've got a couple more episodes to go before the end of year extravaganza um, where we'll be uh, running a tournament style poll to um, decide which score from the past year we're going to revisit um, and uh, you know, maybe this one will come up, who knows but for now uh, let me bring up that uh, PDF that I just exported. You'll see it just a little clearer like that. Um, and let's run that against the uh, soundtrack. Um, let's just quickly make sure we're not on super loud. That should be loud enough. Um, okay. So I will bid you good night. I hope you've had a good time. If you have, please like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully see you again next week. Okay. Ta-ta for now.